Hey, what's up, guys? This is Woody Geek. Welcome to Let's Play Sonic Heroes Team Dark Story. So, yes, this is going to be a Let's Play of the game, but since each of the four uh, teams that this game has to offer go through all the same stages, just with different difficulties, I figured I'd just go through Team Dark, because they're my favorite team. Um, about the teams, there's Team Sonic, Team Sonic... Uh, Right, it's a team of Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles. Team Dark, which is Shadow, Rouge, and E123 Omega. Team Rose, which is Amy Rose, Cream the Rabbit, and Big the Cat. And then Team Chaotix, which is Espia the Chameleon, Vector the Crocodile, and Charmy B. Uh, I guess I'll... I don't know why I wanted to do Team Dark over the fact that... I guess I just wanted to do it because they're my favorite team, because of uh, Shadow being my favorite Sonic character. Uh... Omega being probably the best Knuckles clone in any game, because Knuckles and Omega pr play pretty much the same way. Also, I figured I'd give myself a bit of a challenge in playing the hard team, because each team has their own set difficulty. Sonic being normal, Dark being hard, uh, Rose being easy, and Chaotix being mission. So without further ado, let's get started with Team Dark Story of Sonic Heroes. so we can start looking for Eggman together. Oh yeah, baby, this makes us a team. Okay, starting up, stage one, Seaside Hill. Get to the Whale Island. The missions are pretty straightforward. It's basically get from point A to point B. You two ready? Warning, immediate destruction if distracted. <laughs> Hope you can keep up with me. Alright, now we're starting into the game. So, Sonic Heroes is a Sonic game where you control three different characters at the same time. Each team has a specific kind of character per team. By that I mean, uh, each one specializes in a unique ability. Uh, Shadow, for Team Dark, is the speed character. He can go around at fast speeds and get from point A to point B very quickly. Uh, Rouge, the flight character, is able to have... Uh, get all three team members into the air at the same time and float over various uh, various pitfalls and traverse the train more vertically than the other two. Uh, Omega, the power class for uh, for Team Dark, is able to smash objects rel with relative ease and is able to destroy many enemies in a single shot. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the quintessential basics of them. Each character also has other moves that I'll be getting into a little bit later. Uh, like that, for example. That is Shadow's uh, Tornado ability. All speed characters have it. If you jump into the air and press B on the GameCube controller, I'm playing this on the GameCube, by the way, um, they can summon a tornado, which stuns enemies temporarily, but also makes them completely immune to damage uh, because they're stunned, which is an interesting glitch, I'm assuming, because I don't know if that was intentional or not, um, but, and it also lets, uh, the teams ascend any poles that they come across, which, um, when we come across one, I'll point it out, and, um, yeah, that's basically what the tornado does. It also gives Sonic and Shadow 
uh, some extra height to their jump. For the other two team, uh, speed characters, it doesn't really do all that much. Uh, for Team Rose, which is the easy difficulty, Amy Rose's uh, tornado ability only uh, sends a tornado flying from her hammer towards the enemies. Or whatever target it is. So she basically is at a standstill while she does it. And for that reason, it's not too good at uh, getting from point A to point B really quickly. As with most Sonic games, of course, it's all about point A to point B. Going from one place to another. Uh, this, is a, this is an ability of Rouge, the flight character. With flight characters, they will carry their teammates around uh, when you switch to their formations with X or Y. Um, and if you press B, while you're in that formation, you will fire your, your teammates. Uh, that's called Thundershoot. Thundershoot will temporarily disable enemies uh, from the fight, or if you're at a high enough level, will instantly destroy them. It actually depends on what enemy you use this on. Um, each team also has a various influence on cannons, which progress them through the, the level a little further. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll point them out next time I come across one. With the power character, if you press B once, you the power character brings both of the others uh, into it, his, yeah, his, because all of them are boys, uh, arms, and will... It's basically like a temporary shield if you're going up against enemies and get hit while you're in that animation. And... Yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. Uh, it's With every level up, which is indicated by the glowing circle underneath each character portrait, um, power characters can add an extra or more powerful attack to their, uh, their three-punch combo. I'm calling it a three-punch combo, even though it only becomes a three-punch combo when you level up the first time. Uh, with Omega, press it once, you swing your right arm, press it twice, your left. Uh, press it three times when you have a level, you will fire something uh, from your arsenal. Uh, for level one, it's going to be just some gunfire. Uh, for level two, it's going to be uh, a flamethrower, some flamethrowers, and for level three, it's going to be missiles. Level 3 Shadow, usually with a single homing attack, will be able to destroy uh, most enemies. And uh, when we get to a pull, if you homing attack that while at level 3, you will be able to um, ascend it like that instead of just using the regular tornado. It's, much, it's a much faster way of ascending it. Uh, these Bobcar segments are nothing too major starting off. So, no really need to worry about them just yet. Until When we get to later uh, levels, we will have to, though. So, look forward to that. Uh, each character formation is denoted by which character you're using. With Omega, if you don't have the teammates in, uh, in your arms, you will um, go at a... Uh, what is it? It's a spread out formation, I guess you can call it. Where Omega's in the front, uh, and the other two teammates, Shadow and Rouge, are on his uh, sides. That will... Um, <clears throat> if you're going up to some loop-de-loops, usually you have to spread out into, a, into that formation just so you can get all the goodies on each side. Um, yeah, at the end of every level, you're graded on... A, how well you did, basically. Uh, if you got all levels for your characters, if you uh, sped through the level as fast as you could, uh, more rings you collect, the better your score. Yeah, excuse me, the better your score is. So basically, it's it's a typical Sonic ranking game where your rank just determines how well you did. Anyway, Act Two of Seaside Palace, which is level one, is going to be Ocean Palace. I don't know if I repeated myself there. I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, uh, Shadow is my favorite Sonic character for a number of reasons. I like his personality in uh, in his debut and in this, but not in 06, I guess you can say. Cause, well, no one really liked 06, and those who did need to be need to really rethink their life. Uh, but I also like Shadow because, you know, rollerblades. If you watch my JSRF Let's Play, you'll know why I think uh, highly of rollerblades. Uh, that's a key I just collected. 
Uh, with keys in uh, levels, if you collect the key... <clears throat> at the end of every level, if you kept the key for the entire uh, stage without getting hit, you will be eligible to go to a special stage. For Act 1, this is just a, a bonus place to earn more 1-ups. And for Act 2, you're actually... You actually have the chance to go for a Chaos Emerald in, uh, if you collect it and, you know, go through it like that. But, uh, again, there's no real point in doing it in Act 1 when the main goal of the game is to get all the Chaos Emeralds to unlock the final story. Uh, but you also have to clear all the other characters' uh, stories first to unlock the final story. I will be showing the final story, by the way. And the other reason I'm doing Team Dark is because I feel like when anyone does a... Uh, a Sonic Heroes Let's Play, it's either them doing all the characters or just Team Sonic and and the last story. I kind of wanted to have a little variety, and even though um, even though Team Dark is pretty much Team Sonic as well, um, I don't want to do Team Rose because it's too easy, and I don't want to do Team Chaos because it's not the the it's not the same gameplay as what the game was intended to be. Uh, although Team Chaos is fun to play as, it's just not the kind of gameplay that Sonic Heroes really needs. Uh, trying to... didn't want to go into Rouge's format. Or format. Formation. There we go. Anyway, not really much to talk about. But, yeah. Oh, one thing I haven't touched on yet is the Team Blast. If you have a full team... oh, great. Lost the key. Uh, if you have the team blast meter all filled up, and you um, press Z, you will activate a team blast, which is a super powerful move that destroys the um, anyone on screen. And by destroys anyone on a screen, I mean that um, it just does insane amounts of damage to um, to standard bad nicks, and for bosses, it just re no it. Okay, eliminates bad bad nicks, the robots were fighting, and it significantly dents bosses' health. I think I got my point across there. Let's just use it right off the bat. Not right off the bat, just right here. Uh, each team blast differs, differs to each team that's using it. Um, for Team Dark, uh, after they use it, it will pretty much act as Shadow's signature chaos control where um, it freezes all enemies on screen and they can't do anything. It basically stops time. Uh, for Team Sonic, after they use theirs, if they do the right uh, button command, uh, they can continue attacking as if they were using the Team Blast, um, just for a limited period of time. Uh, Team Rose will become invincible for a short time after using theirs, so theirs is a lot more practical, so if you really want to free uh, invincibility, just use your Team Blast. And Team Chaotix, I believe every enemy they kill with theirs will turn into a ring box. So there's that. Team Blast is kind of unnecessary, although they look cool. Um, it's just an overpowered attack. What I was doing right there and earlier on in the stage, but I forgot to mention, was the wall jump. As speed characters, except for Amy Rose, I believe, uh, if you homing attack a wall, you can actually wall jump off of it with correct uh, timing of uh, the A button. Now what we have here is basically another City Escape uh, GUN truck. Just keep running and you should be fine. But sometimes uh, the game doesn't like to let you get away that easily, for example. Now I can't even get the Chaos Emerald. So, yeah. But, uh, thankfully, if you fail it getting to the Chaos Emerald stage of every level, you can always go back with another character or just later on uh, into into the game where you can pick the stage manually. Um, and you can get it that way. So really, you have infinite chances at getting the Chaos Emeralds. And uh, there's no real consequence of not getting it the first time. And no, as you could probably already tell, this is not a no-hit run of Sonic Heroes. I'd be crazy to do that. Because I'm not good at this game in its entirety. And stages usually do take about four to five minutes. I'm messing with my microphone right now. So a no-hit run is out of the question for me. So you're the ones who are playing games with my army.
Primary target detected. Destroy Dr. Eggman. You must only <laughs> Is that any way to treat your creator? Now witness your master's real power. I like how during that uh, cutscene, Eggman's windshield went through the subtitles. Don't know how it did that. Another ability of Shadow and Sonic is that if they approach a line of rings, they can uh, they can press B, and they will do a light dash, so they will collect the line of rings. All right, now this is a uh, this is one of the bosses. The Egg Hawk. Uh, it is pretty easy if you just wail on it with the power character. Uh, and you can get an A rank if you defeat it when it first lands, which was unfortunate, which unfortunately did not happen early because uh, sometimes the AI just uh, decides to skip that if you're going to too many places at once, I guess. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be getting an A rank on this boss. I think if you take more than a minute, it's a B rank. Uh, less than a minute, A rank. Anything more than that. Because in, in boss fights, it's, you, it's only... The only ranking is denoted by uh, how fast you took it down. The, the rings don't matter as much, and the general score doesn't matter at all. It's just how fast you beat the boss. I wonder how I did. I think I got a C or a B. Pretty sure I see. Oh. Go figure. Anyway, uh, that was the end of Seaside Hill, and I'm going to be cutting parts uh, by level. So next time, I'll see you guys for the next level. So hopefully you enjoyed. This is What a Geek. I'll see you guys later.